Hello everyone and welcome back to the Brightworks and another match beyond all reason. Today we're taking a look at a match that was recently played on Esker Creek. This is a fairly new map, I feel like. It's it's been a while it's been around for a little while, but it still feels pretty new in my mind. Pretty fresh to say the very least. So I'm excited to see what some top level players can show us. Now that the meta's probably been developed a little bit longer. I'm still recovering from my vacation, so I'm still figuring out what are all the changes that have been made. Has the new meta changed? And I'm Always excited to try and bring that sort of stuff right to the forefront of the Beyond All Reason YouTube experience. So anyway, <laughs> spawning right here as our red team leader, a commander in Armada Red that goes by the name of Flash. Flash an old timer for sure. 43 true skill, silver chevrons, plenty of experience, knows exactly what they're doing and going to be investing heavily in the wind. Right when the wind speed is pretty low, that does hurt quite a bit, but going to be making that long term investment to eventually have plenty of energy later on. Gonna be going into some Armada bots here, so that's gonna be cool, and spawning over here on the northern side. Now I'm noticing immediately, uh, one of the things about Esker Creek is of course that there's a lot of, you, it's basically a lane map. There's there's a lot of lanes that you can control, except for essentially right here where Ace Unit 1 is playing, where you can afford to sometimes go into air, but it doesn't look like that's gonna be the case. So I'm curious to see exactly who is going to play air, if anybody, and what exactly their strategy is going to be. All the way on the other side of the map, actually, oh, okay, playing as the air player for the blue team, it's Reedsweed. Reedsweed going to be trying to, uh, I guess, get some transports out to everybody on the field. I wonder if we're just going to go for the transports and then switch back into ground-based units, or if we're just going to stay in the air and try and use air support. Cortex T1 air, of course, infamously powerful for their shurikens. Looks like we are planning to go for a bomber, a constructor, Finch. Okay, so we're staying in the air right here as our blue team leader. Hmm. What this means is, of course, that this is now a 7 versus 8 on the ground. With those shurikens in the air, you definitely can get an immense amount of value if they can manage to shut down entire armies, expensive armies, maces, rocketeers, aggravators, all that sort of stuff. If they get the opportunity to, shutting those down can be immensely powerful. Commander being transported right here. Hans Joaquin moving the commander forward right now, trying desperately to set up a forward position. I imagine we want to do... Oh, okay, we're going to we're gonna stop on the blue side of the river here. I wondered if we were going to try and set up a beachhead, sort of a, a frontal assault area over on this side of the river. Doesn't look like that's going to be the case, though. Just putting the commander pretty far forward here, setting up some LLTs, some metal extractors, all that good stuff. Not the end of the world, but definitely it feels like a tame, a tame way to do this. Ticks in the back line here. Uh, eventually will be cleaned up. Not bad. Started up some LLTs, but I think getting those mexes up and running is probably really the only most important part. We do have uh, mexes coming up in the back line here as well. We've got LLTs to guard it all, wind turbines, all that good stuff. Glad to see that everybody's expanding nice and quickly. Another tick coming across the map, and we'll take a look at the red perspective here so we can see exactly what they've scouted. One, two, three, four of the commander, five of the commanders have been scouted so far. It looks like we're about to get a peek at the sixth. And so far, yeah, scouting information has actually been pretty, pretty good for the red team. Blue team, uh, likewise, has a pretty good view of actually exactly what's going down over here. We have red, maroon, brown, hot pink. Uh, we're about to spy orange, and we've seen yellow as well. Leaves us with only Barbarian, Barbarian, and Thanat, the tan and powder pink commanders. The only two left unscouted right here. Nice snipe on this metal extractor up here, by the way. Constructor needs to go back and finish the mission. So far, though, the scout aggression has been high. We do see some ticks roving across over here. There must have been a change, because last time I recall, the ticks couldn't actually cross this river here. Must have been some sort of, some sort of elevation change. That or I'm woefully out of the loop here. Yeah, looks like ticks have all the room in the world to maneuver through this river. Okay, not the end of the world. Definitely just means that we have a wide open surface for these scouts to try and leak on through. Ooh, nice bombing run. Nice bombing run right there. Metal extractors, wind turbines, and uh, solar panels getting blown apart right here. There is a single finch included, so that's why this bombing run was even half as successful. Nice, another successful one. Playing right with the grain right there. I'm going to make sure that we take down as many of these structures as possible. Wow, this is some serious, serious power right here. 
That was a whopping, I want to say, 10, maybe 12 wind turbines blown to, sp blown to pieces right here by this bomber. My goodness, these uh, Cortex bombers are strong, huh? <laughs> a single bomber tearing apart this entire facility over here. My goodness. Going in for another connection over here. We do have the anti-air bot firing away wherever it can. Ah, there we go. More damage. My goodness. Solar panels, metal extractors, wind turbines. All that and more being blown apart by this bomber. No air player, indeed, coming to bite the red team in the rears. It's an investment you make to try and control the ground war. But with this much damage on one of these bombers, definitely, definitely doing enough damage to justify the cost is what I'm trying to say. Anti-air tower firing away and eventually will shoot down that bomber. But my goodness, three bases ravaged by a single bomber. Definitely, Reedsweet has gotten the value that he was hoping for out of that bomber. Constructors starting up some solar panels in the back here. We're going to be going for some more build power as well. Marching forward with the commander, using a transport to jump on top of any mexes that are unclaimed right here. All is well in the blue world. Definitely a killer opening right here. Flash is going to be forced into some sort of emergency action here. We do have the resbots at the very least to eat up a bunch of trees right now. Have a bunch of extra energy lying around. But certainly setting up these wind turbines should be highest priority. Getting some sort of energy production up and online is key. It's a lot of units over here as well. I think Janus's are probably going to be the name of the game. It's the only way you're going to connect with all of these units in an efficient enough manner. Pawns sprinting forward now. Flash trying to get in a position to deflect all this. Deflect, but can't really stop. Eh, yeah, Pawns having some hesitations right here. These Rocketeers are vulnerable, though. The uh, forest on fire will actually damage units that are moving through them. You might have seen that one was on 6%, went down to 5 It's uh, it's effectively napalm, which is pretty funny. Oh, no. This is a nightmare, though. Pawns running into the back line. Two mechs is about to fall. E-converter in trouble here as well. Maybe the E-converter like a uh, impromptu landmine. Oh, nice micro right there. My goodness, Hans Joaquin on top of it right there with the micro. Making sure not to lose the pawns by accidentally surrounding the explosive building and dying in the subsequent explosion. Very, very nicely done. LLT here will eventually thwart most of this attack. But one, two, three, four metal extractors fallen. Definitely, definitely a high cost trade right there for the red player. And we're not even done yet. There's still a couple more pawns moving into the back. Oh no. No LLTs back here to guard these metal extractors either. And these pawns will get into the back. Excellent harassment right here. Love to see this, this kind of harassment. Shutting down all of these metal extractors is key to success. And just like that, more and more pawns in the back line right here. Doing a wonderful job. Blasting apart wind turbines, constructors, all sorts of stuff. My goodness. Constructor falls, wind turbines pop. The economy in shambles right here for our red team leader. Pawns aren't even done yet. Still plenty of room to operate over here. Flashing a lot of trouble on the front lines. Managed to bring down the commander over here. The Cyan commander. However, poor soul. 23%. Falling fast. Rocketeers firing away. And there's quite a lot of them. Aggravators, rocketeers, all sorts of stuff. It's a one, two, three colored army going up against a one colored army. Flash never really got up to that snowball. Excellently done right here by Lacko and Hans Joachim. Keeping the pressure high while the vehicle player was trying to scale. Managing to sh shut down that vehicle lab. <clears throat> Pardon me. Shut down that vehicle lab before it actually went into any kind of mass production. Definitely a nice move right there. Flash not expecting to be countered so hard. But with three commanders weight bearing down on top of him. It was nearly impossible to hold. That and these killer bombing runs too, shutting down so much of the economy. Wind turbines falling, metal extractors, solar panels, all of it targeted in the back line. Still no air transition from anybody on this team. Pawn in the background right here with 13 kills, by the way. Anti-air bots trying to fire away at whatever they can. E-converters pop, build power in trouble. Wind turbines have been scouted. Yep, going to be the primary target. 
These medium impulse bombs. Oh, ravaging the wind turbine fields. Beautiful, beautiful bombing runs right there. And we've got some more coming up too. Wow, the wind turbines chain reacting right here for ace unit one. Oh no. Those wind turbines chain reacting will go down. Oh, one more bomb is dropped. Not quite good. Oh, well, you know what? It'll kill the metal extractor. All right. These bombing runs have been extremely efficient right here for Reed Sweep. The fact that we've been able to take out multiple bases worth of production right here is devastating. This pawn that's just been in the back line, causing so much trouble, eventually falls. Flash's economy is in shambles in the back. We've been building metal extractors, all sorts of stuff, but we've been a good long while without any actual production. Pop-up turret here to try and save the day. Pop-up turret's quite good. Quite vulnerable to commander explosions, though. Flash holding on for dear life, but desperately needs a hero. Oh, oh, bomber's coming in for the snipe. Oh, no. Bomber's coming in. Heavy impulse bombs connect. Oh, that commander just barely walks away. 13% HP on that commander. My goodness, was it close. They're doubling back around. They want blood. They smell it in the water. Ooh, 10% HP. The static defense falls here as well. Those bombers are extremely efficient for dealing with that. Oh, bombers bypassing the commander, realizing, wait a second. Why don't we just go into the back line? Have ourselves a feast in the back line. Beautiful bombing runs. Yeah, these metal extractors have been unclaimed. This entire base has been ravaged by four pawns. This is a nightmare for the red team. What a masterclass in continual harassment. Making sure to continually get those units through the gaps in the armor and doing so much damage in the back line with them. Tremendous efficiency right here. I adore it. Wind turbine's in a whole bunch of trouble now. Uh, actually not going for the wind turbines. Okay. Finally, finally, after four successful bombing runs, we see a single, slightly less efficient bombing run. <laughs> I just know Reed Sweet's got to be pretty happy with the amount of damage that we're doing right now. These bombers have been instrumental to the success over here on the northern side right now. Southern side is starting to fall as the hounds get out and onto the field. Kind of. Uh, the hounds need proper scouting. They need either a tick spam or radar bots or something to give them more vision so they can actually fire away efficiently. There they go. Starting to chip away at some of these units over here, but it is not super fast. This is the this is the time in the game where you start to think about eating up your own T1 units. Once these once these T2 start to hit the field, they're gonna start trading out ridiculously efficiently. Commander goes down over here, by the way. Gauntlet firing away. Doing tons and tons of damage, using this high ground as a platform for launching those plasma projectiles all over the place. Brown Commander it was. Uh, Mokramis. Aggression over here. Shut down by reinforcements from the orange and maroon and all sorts of stuff. Rocketeers now firing away at some of these LLTs. Doing a nice job of melting those away. Trying to, trying to force back Hans Joachim and Lako. So many medium tanks. Yeah, the green medium tank ball is tremendous. Well, LLT is having a field day. There we go. Medium tanks finally jump on top of them. The armor plating on those tanks is too thick, and the medium tanks will roll on through the LLTs. Fireball in a lot of trouble right here. Orange forces move back into position to try and help out. We have Resbots picking up this army and trying to re resurrect it and put it back on the field. Don't mind that one bit, of course, especially with the medium tanks. You get so much HP out of resurrecting them. I don't mind that one bit. Uh, okay, there we go. Pawns can effectively counter medium tanks if you get a really good surround. It entirely depends on the shape of the engagement, but I think there's more than enough pawns right here to shut all this down. The swarm is marching forward. And every one of these medium tanks that falls can be resurrected, put back into the army, and sent back in the other direction. Or, of course, eaten up and turned into a T2 transition. Flash finally getting the lab back up and online right here. On the verge of death for multiple minutes here in this game. Definitely an effective strategy to shut down the top, top player on the other team, and eventually you're going to be in a pretty good spot now. 
effectively the blue player, the blue team leader, has, in, in some sense you could say, not been contributing on the ground. The bombing runs have been phenomenal this game, but they haven't had forces on the ground. But because of this aggression on the northern side of the map, neither has the red team leader. So I think it definitely more than well equalizes. Alright, another big medium tank swell right here. Res bots are pulled backwards. Pawns are sent to try and clean up more of these medium tanks. Ah, uh, the hounds in the back line, though, are making this much more efficient. As soon as those hounds start firing away, things start to melt supremely fast. Resbots trying desperately to pick up some of these tanks, pick up anything that they can to save the day. There just isn't enough on the field. Do we have a T2 transition? We do. The brown player does have a T2 lab up and running. We're going for T2 mexes as well. Ah, the tech level just isn't high enough over here for the red team. We're already on T2. We've already got full T2 propagation. We've got T2 metal extractors for everybody up here. The economy is slipping wildly out of control right here for the red team. And I think that's entirely based on this overwhelming aggression over on the northern side. Resbots continuing to resurrect, but at this point I feel like reclaiming and using that metal to fund your allies' T2 transition might not be the worst idea here. Of course, getting those T2 constructors out, getting those T2 metal extractors out, really, really valuable. You can't always reclaim these tanks that you resurrect, of course, and get even more value out of them. It does, does take a lot of time, and more importantly, it takes a lot of energy. Are these Centurion marching forward? They are! We've got some little Centurion meatballs waddling their way forward right now. Those, uh, medium... T1 medium bots. Anti-swarm bots, they're called now. They used to be called a medium bot, but anyway. Waddling around, having a blast. One of the few bots that can sort of go toe-to-toe -to -toe with medium tanks. Only in the sense that they are extremely sturdy in the same way that a medium tank is, but... In all other respects, their LLT doesn't do overwhelming damage there. Uh, movement speed is nothing to brag about. But at the very least, they do not care one bit about walking into LLTs. Hounds over here have eventually blasted away this commander. Looks like we took out a huge portion of this army as well. Resbot's gonna be enjoying a feast. Well, okay, they were enjoying a feast over here. 4.4 thousand metal should be more than enough to afford a T2 transition right here. Oftentimes, one of the things I love to do is just go ahead and slap a couple of these butlers on the back of whatever constructor is building the metal extractors, just because they're, you know, they're always going to need the, uh, or you're always going to want the metal extractors, so it's just a surefire investment. Uh, self ding the Centurion here. Decided we're not going to get much value out of these bad boys and just decided to self-destruct them rather than leave that metal over on the other side. It is quite a lot of metal, too, so not the worst idea here. Always happy to watch self-destruct micro because, well, there's not a lot of micro to do in this game, I feel like. That's a point of contention that a lot of people, that's that's been an open point of discussion for a long time, is how much micro each individual unit should have. And the prevailing thesis, at least for beyond all reason and beyond all reason sorts of games, is uh, individual unit micro should matter less than overall unit micro, unit positioning, uh, the shape of your army, the composition of your army, all that sort of stuff. The only reason I bring it up is because when we do see a little bit of killer unit micro, it makes it very exciting, yeah. I think so, at the very least. Gunslinger firing away. Gunslingers finding value in the mid-game is rare. Not unheard of, but rare. Oftentimes, they can be a really successful run-by force. Just for the fact that if they get damaged killing, uh, you know, metal extractors or energy converters or whatever, they can always just back up a second and take a little breather but even then they're not the fastest they don't do the most damage their impulse is nice for stopping medium tanks it's one of the reasons why i say they're such a perfect counter to medium tanks you can see every time they connect one of their shots with the medium tanks it stops it in its tracks makes them really really su successful at shutting down those treaded treaded nightmares and there we go regenerating some of the health I will say there is a snowball factor to the Gunslingers as well. The fact that they can regenerate health means that if you really micro your heart out with them, they can, be, they can snowball quite tremendously. At least until that T3 comes out and can kill them virtually instantly. Flash finally rebuilt right here, but is rebuilding into a T1 army. Ironically, the T1 army probably does counter this Sheldon Ball here. 
if we can find a way to get the jump on them. Yeah, Gunslinger's doing a decent job. We have 1950 metal and gunslingers versus about 2,000, a little over 2,000 in tanks. And the gunslingers do come out on top. You know what? Micro just right against just the right composition and just the right pace and just the right speed. Maybe the gunslinger, maybe there is something to the gunslinger. They definitely seem to work better in teams. Their impulse having much more effect there. Spybot sent out now. Probably planning to try and spybot those gunslingers as much as possible. Obviously one effective way of shutting down gunslingers, just using some EMP. Paralyze the gunslingers and then jump on top of them that way. We're going for more gauntlets over here, my goodness. We have a full-blown hound ball over on this side, and we're going for gauntlets. I think EMP makes a lot of sense over here as well. But yeah, sending sending some uh, EMP bots forward to try and paralyze all these uh, hounds right here wouldn't be the worst idea. The yellow commander here. The name I think I'll hold off on pronouncing live. Going to be trying to thwart the hounds right here. Ah, the micro is good enough though, and the yellow commander does fall. Those green hounds causing loads of issues over here. Suddenly, just like that, the line is broken. The T2 lab has fallen as well. Gauntlet trying its best to put in the hurt, but definitely not as valuable as a T2 static defense would be. Bombers coming in. We have a couple defensive fighters. Not a lot, though. Chainsaw up on the front lines here, actually. Doing a decent job. Scouting plane. Revealing a whole bunch of this base over here. Geothermal. Oh my goodness, these bombers are terrible. <laughs> these bombers are really bad. Geothermal survives the bombing run. Fighters jump on top of the Stormbringers. Oh my goodness. Watching in comparison as a single whirlwind uh, manages to just take down, dismantle the entire red team versus... 20 Stormbringers doing effectively nothing. I mean, granted, the Micro plays a huge role there. But my goodness, those T1 Armada Bombers are just about worthless. Medium tanks and hounds in the back line, never a good sign. The front lines have fallen. Pink Commander's base is falling. Wind turbines popping. Metal extractors exploding. Lightning tanks in the back. And indeed, it looks like the red team realizes they hold, they no longer have the forces to hold under the weight of the blue team. The overwhelming bombing runs in the early game, opening up the late game into an overwhelming economic and technological advantage. And what more do you need than that? What a beautiful, beautiful showcase of exactly how annoying you have to be to shut down some of the best of the best players in this game. Thanks a ton for watching. Sure hope you've enjoyed, and I will see you in the very next game of Beyond All Reason. Peace out, everybody.